Hello, I'm Zach from the AWS DJL team, and welcome to this session on building blocks and models. Models in deep learning behave like black box functions. So when you try and build a model, just like a function, the first thing you want to do is figure out what your function signature is going to be. DJL, we refer to these signatures as applications. And right now we're going to work an application called image classification. Once you have your application, the next thing you need to do is build a data set. The data set we're going to be using is called MNIST. It's a standard deep learning data set that has an input of handwritten digits in a 28 by 28 grayscale image. And you need to classify those digits into what the picture is of from zero to nine. Now that we have our data set, the next step is to choose the model to train it. And the model we're going to choose is the multi-layer perceptron. The multi-layer perceptron is organized into layers, where the first layer is referred to as the input layer because it matches your input, and the last layer is referred to as the output layer because it matches your output. In between the two, you have some number of hidden layers that represent intermediate work. Between each layer and the previous layer is a linear transformation consisting of a matrix multiplication and a vector addition. This is sometimes referred to as a fully connected layer in other frameworks because each feature in the previous layer is connected to every single feature in the next layer. Not pictured here, each linear transformation is followed by a nonlinear activation function that is used to break the linearity. The more hidden layers you have and the bigger each hidden layer is, the more complex functions your multi-layer perceptron is capable of representing. The multi-layer perceptron accepts a batch of one-dimensional feature vectors formatted as a single ND array and an ND list as input. And it produces a batch of single-dimensional feature vectors as output. Now, the first thing you need to do is figure out what the size of these inputs and outputs are because these are the only things which are fixed in the multi-layer perceptron. Our input vector is going to have size 28 by 28 because the MDIST images have that size. And because MDIST is grayscale, each pixel only requires a single element in the feature vector to be represented. The output has size 10 because the digits 0 through 9 each have a probability that we are going to be predicting. Now we can start building our model. We're going to start with the block. Detail, blocks serve a purpose similar to functions. They convert an input formatted as an ND list to an output formatted as an ND list. They can represent single operations, parts of a model, or even the entire model itself. What makes blocks special is they internally have parameters. And during the training process, these parameters are trained to make the block better represent the same function as your data set. When building blocks, the easiest way is to use composition. Similarly to how functions are made by calling other functions, blocks will internally be built up by other blocks. We have several helpers to make it easy to build common block structures. One of these is a sequential block that you see here, but it is used to create a chain of, fun of blocks where the output of one block is passed in as the input to the next block. Now it's time to add our layers. The first thing we need to add is a batch flatten block that flattens the input from a two-dimensional image into a single-dimensional feature vector. After that, we're going to add our first hidden layer which has size 128 in its linear transformation, along with the corresponding activation function, and we chose the popular ReLU as our activation function. For the second hidden layer, we have a transformation of size 64, along with its corresponding ReLU. And finally, we have a linear transformation into our final output size of 10. The num number of layers you have as well as the size of each layer, is something which is chosen during experimentation. But this is what we're going to go with for now.
Finally, we can build our model. The model is a wrapper around the block that adds some important metadata, such as the name, that can be used during training and inference. Congratulations, you've now successfully built your first block and model. In the next video, we're going to show you how to train them. Thanks for watching.